Good morning. Good morning. And Merry Christmas. It's wonderful that you have chosen Christmas morning of all mornings to get up early and come and be in the Lord's house. Uh, but it's good that you're here because we're here to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And to be reminded once more what a wonderful God he is to provide such a Savior for us in such a miraculous and amazing way. Before we get started, I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things. We welcome the guests who are joining us. Uh, we're so glad that you're here with us, and we pray God's blessings upon you during your time with us. Uh, our, our communion practices are printed out for you in the bulletin. I would invite you to take a look at those. Um, since we will be celebrating our Lord's Supper today, he came to us in body and flesh 2,000 years ago, and he does that again today at our Lord's table. And so I invite everybody to, to be reminded of our communion practices as they are printed out in the bulletin. The other thing I wanted to draw your attention to is that our opening hymn is a processional hymn, just as our closing hymn will be a recessional hymn. Uh, so during both of those hymns, I invite you to stand and face the cross as it makes its way forward and back. And so with that, I invite you to now stand for our opening hymn, which is a processional hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, hymn 379.
our liturgy this morning is a created liturgy, so everything is printed out for you in the bulletin, except for the hymns. So we begin now with our invocation and opening sentences. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for fulfilling your promise to redeem us from our sins by sending us your only begotten Son. Grant that we may always welcome him and worship him as the Savior of the world and the Lord of our hearts, our Emmanuel, Jesus the Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit rule as one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We now sing our hymn of praise, Joy to the World, hymn 387.
Our Old Testament reading for today comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now sing our hymn of response, Away in a Manger, hymn 364. Psalms 95 and 97. We read that psalm of praise now responsibly. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with psalms of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King of all. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our leader. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. And give the New Testament reading for today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise
rise now in preparation for the gospel by singing the gradual hymn, Hark the Herald Angels. Today's gospel comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, <clears throat> for he will save his people from their sins. <clears throat> All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated now for our next hymn, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, Hymn 366.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you guys ever heard of something called an occupational surname? Uh, that's what happens when uh, someone's name or their last name came about because of the work that they did. For example, the Millers at one time were people who worked at a mill. Uh, the Smiths at one time in their family history must have been blacksmiths. The Hunters, well again, you can probably figure the rest out. I've been told that uh, my last name uh, was originally pronounced Wolter because our family had something to do with sheep's wool. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but it makes for a good story, if nothing else. Throughout the season of Advent, we have been talking about the names, the unique names and titles that have been attributed to our Lord. In this case, the Bridegroom, the Word, and the Key of David. But there are lots of other names for Jesus in the Bible, uh, such as Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world, and many more. In fact, it's been said that there are over 200 different names or titles for our Lord in the Bible. Today, in our readings and hymns, we have seen two of those names come up over and over again. And they are the focus for today's message. Emmanuel was our Lord's spiritual name, the one given to him way back in the Old Testament. And Jesus was his physical birth name, the one that was given to him by his earthly father on the night of his birth. And yes, both of those names are occupational surnames because they not only identify who he is, but also what he has done for us. Emmanuel, that was the name given by the Heavenly Father to his son through the prophet Isaiah. When Ahaz, the king of Judah, refused to ask the prophet for a sign because he didn't want to do what he knew God wanted him to do, the Lord gave him a sign anyway. And Isaiah told him what that sign would be. A virgin would conceive and bear a son. And when she did, he would be called Emmanuel. Now, as you know, Emmanuel means God with us. And even though King Ahaz may not have liked to hear that, there were a lot of other people who did want to hear that because it was a scary time for the people of Judah. The nation of Assyria was the world's superpower at that time, and they had God's people in their crosshairs. As God had warned, the Assyrians were coming for them. And when they arrived, it would mean the end of Judah. So many of, many of God's people at that time were going to be killed. And many more of them would be carried off into exile. And all because God had left his people to fend for themselves. Because they had rejected him. And they wanted to live their lives by their own standards without God. That's how they knew the dark days were coming. Because that's what God said would happen if they rebelled against him. And they did. So the people were rightly scared. There was a sense of hopelessness and despair among them. And then, in the midst of those dark times, God came to his people with a word of light and a name of hope. And that name was Emmanuel. It was God's solemn promise to them that no matter what was to come, he would never abandon them again. In fact, quite the opposite. God was going to come and dwell among them and be their God in a way that they couldn't possibly imagine. Even though they didn't deserve it, God was going to come and be in their midst to forgive them and bless them once more. And that name, Emmanuel, is still a word of hope and promise and peace for all of the people in our world today, especially those who are struggling to find their way through these dark and scary times. What better news could there be for them and for us than to know that our God loves us and that he's always with us? Now that doesn't mean that there won't still be evil in the world and violence and war. People we love will still die. Friends will still desert us, and other relationships will continue to be broken and distant. From now until our Lord's return, our lives will continue to be filled up with all kinds of disappointments and distress. 
But through it all, we have God's promise that he has not abandoned us. Instead, he has come and dwelt among us in a way that is still beyond our comprehension. Even now, 2,000 years later, we still struggle to understand how God, the creator of the universe, could appear and at the same time be a little infant, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And yet, he was. And because he was, and because he took on our human flesh and entered into our world to dwell among us, he knows firsthand about all the kinds of struggles and hardships that we all face. By being Emmanuel, God was able to know pain, our pain, because he felt it too. And because he did take on our human flesh and our human frailties, now he is able to offer us the kind of relief that he knows we need. By being God with us, he was like us in every way, except without sin. And because he was, that also enabled him to pay the price that the law demanded for our sins. Through his flesh and blood, he exchanged our sins for his eternal righteousness and has made us eternally right with God. And because he did, now there is nothing that can ever separate us from God again. That promise not only gives hope for our lives in the world today, it also gives us hope for the life still to come. That promise was declared to us in today's New Testament reading in Revelation 21. There we saw the true meaning of Emmanuel, and it pointed us to the day when it will finally come to pass that, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. On that day he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. We have that sure and certain hope because the God who desired to live among us forever has sent a Savior to make that possible. He took our place under the law and rescued us from the punishments that we deserved so that we could be redeemed and restored to God forever. And the name of that Savior that God sent was Jesus. A name which literally means Yahweh saves. Now, just so you know, Yahweh was the personal name of God that he revealed about himself in the Old Testament. So, Yahweh saves is basically saying the same thing as God saves. Now, the first time that that name, Yeshua, appeared in the Bible, it was in the book of Exodus. And you know the story how God's people were enslaved for over 400 years, and then God promised to come and uh, rescue them out of their bondage. And one of the leaders that he chose to lead them and to fight for them was a man named Yeshua, which in English is Joshua. So by now you may have figured out that Jesus is the Greek equivalent of Yeshua or Joshua. In fact, Yeshua would have been our Lord's actual Jewish birth name. But since the New Testament was written in Greek, we know him by his Greek name, Jesus. Regardless of what we call him, the point is that once again, God had raised up a man named Yeshua to save his people from their sins. And God's promise is right there in the name. Yahweh saves. Jesus. With that name, God was promising his people that no matter what, Yahweh will always save his people. Now, the Old Testament people of Israel needed their version of Yeshua because they were constantly battling enemies that were larger, stronger, and better equipped than they were. Israel's enemies had giant walls and dangerous weapons and far more soldiers than Israel had. And so, from a worldly point of view, Israel had no chance. But Israel had Yahweh. That's how they could go into battle, confidently and courageously, because they were led by Yeshua, Yahweh saves, reminding them that their God would save them, just as he has promised to do. 
Likewise, we also can go to war against our own powerful enemies, which are sin, death, and the devil. And we can do it with that same courage and confidence because we know that Yeshua, Jesus, is on our side. We call him Jesus. He's known as Yeshua. He's Yahweh saves. Regardless, the promise is the same, that through him, God fights for us and saves us from our enemies. That's why we celebrate his coming today, because we know that when the Lord comes and fights for his people, he always wins. With his mighty arm, he delivers us from all of our enemies, the fear of death, sin's seductive hunger, and the temptations and the lies of the devil. These are the things that threaten us the most. Now, lots of people in our world have tried to find ways of dealing with those enemies. But none of those things that they try work. Because no one can defeat those three overwhelming enemies. Well, no one except for Jesus, the one through whom Yahweh saves. He has fought the good fight on our behalf against those miserable monsters. And he mopped the floor with them. His victory was accomplished, and Yahweh saved us fully when Jesus died on the cross and then rose to life again victorious on Sunday morning. And now by faith, that victory over those enemies is now our own. By God's grace through faith, Yahweh has saved us. Jesus has done it, and it is done. All of the things that once had the power to separate us from God have been destroyed and deleted. For thousands of years, God's people lived in exile from God because the way back to him was always blocked by sin. But in the fullness of time, when man couldn't come to God, God came to us. And by being Emmanuel, God with us, he was able to be God for us and save us from all our enemies. And he's still our Savior and Emmanuel today. He is God with us now, as he lives in our hearts. But more than that, just as he did so long ago in that manger, today he also comes among us and dwells in our presence in the flesh. His body and blood, which we're about to receive here at his table, in that way he is today God with us in our hands, in our mouths, and in our hearts, Emmanuel has come and will unite himself to us again. Today, we are reminded once more that this child who came to us in this incredible way was given those noble names because he was the one who came to rescue us and restore us and make us holy once more. Jesus is the name of the one who has done it. And because he's also our Emmanuel, we know that God will be with us through whatever trials and tribulations we may face in this world. And then, after all of that, we know that he will welcome us into his eternal presence, where we will dwell with him forever in the perfect paradise that he has prepared for us. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is your Emmanuel. In him you have the promise that God is with you and for you. May the light of that promise, which came to us 2,000 years ago, continue to shine brightly in your hearts and in your lives. Yahweh has saved you, and he is with you, now and forevermore. Amen. We are now blessed to have our choir sing a Christmas anthem.
so much for that. I now invite the congregation to rise as we join together in confessing our Christian faith. Uh, this will be the second article of the Creed and its explanation. I believe in God the Father and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, <clears throat> purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. Not with gold or silver, but with his holy and precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true. We remain standing now as our offerings are brought forward. We sing our offertory, Angels We Have Heard on High, hymn 368. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, long ago you came to us through prophets, priests, and kings. But now you have come to us through your Son, your only Son, Jesus Christ. He was with you when you created the world. In the beginning was the Word. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people. Though the world came into being through him, the world did not know him, and in many places still does not recognize him. Yet his glory is full of grace and truth. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, through whom you have called us by faith to become your children. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for sending your Son to come and live among us, as one of us, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In his name we pray. Amen. As we continue on with the service of the sacrament, we begin with confession and absolution. There was a time when the world sat in darkness, separated from God by sin. Since we were unable to find God in that darkness, He came near to us as a baby, born of a virgin, bringing with Him the great light of our salvation. Therefore, trusting God's promises, let us draw near to Him now and confess our sins, and then joyfully receive His words of forgiveness and peace. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in our words, thoughts, and deeds. The world has tempted us to put our hope and joy in material things and to be envious of others rather than clinging to you and seeking first your kingdom. For the sake of Jesus, forgive us and renew us that we may delight in your word and gladly obey your will. This child whose birth we celebrate today, he took our flesh upon himself in order to give his life as the payment for our sins. He conquered death by his death and then rose from the grave for our justification. Therefore, in his name and at his command, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right for us to give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for the mystery of the Word made flesh, through whom you have given us a new revelation of your glory. Grant that as we see the humanity of our Savior, we might be drawn to love the things of you that are not seen, and receive them from you as you have promised. Therefore, it is our joyful privilege to join our vo voices with the saints and angels, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of heaven. Blessed is he who comes through the virgin's birth, the ancient promise from of old, just as God had long foretold. We celebrate the birth of Christ today, who came to take our sins away. With the hosts of heaven we proclaim, praise to the Savior's holy name. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And the peace of the Lord be with you always. life and salvation that we have received through the precious gift of your body and blood. Strengthen our faith as you have promised to do, that we may always be able to celebrate the joyful peace you have given us today, and continually proclaim the good news of your salvation as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We remain standing now for our recessional hymn, hymn 388, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Amen. 